Hello, today you're watching the Tropics Topics of September the 8th, 2018. Very busy time in the Atlantic. It's usually the peak of the season around this time of year. And accordingly, we do have a lot to talk about. Um, from east to west, we have Tropical Storm Helene, currently a 45 mile hour tropical storm approaching the Cap Cabo Verde Islands. Uh, tropical Depression 9, centered out here in the tropical Atlantic, uh, currently 35 mile hour winds on that one could become our next tropical storm. In fact, it's pretty much guaranteed to. And Tropical Storm Florence, the main topic of today's video, which has winds of 65 miles an hour or maybe even greater than that now, and a pressure of 995 millibars. Uh, here's a wide shot of the Atlantic. Uh, we can see all the activity here. Um, in addition to this one uh, disturbance that has a very low chance of development, so we're not really going to touch on that. Uh, Tropical Storm Helene, TD9, and TS Florence. Uh, we're going to go east to west in this update. We'll get to Florence last because that's the main topic of today. Uh, let's start with Helene. Here, a pretty well-defined tropical storm even has, it's not really an eye feature right there, it's more of kind of a dry slot in the middle of all this deep convection that being pulled in from the African continent. You can kind of see here that in this loop we have just flow screaming here coming in from the north-northwest, bringing in a lot of dry air, and that's all being entrained to the system. Uh, despite that, it is still strengthening with earnest, currently a 45 mile an hour tropical storm and is expected to continue intensification throughout the day as it approaches the southern Cabo Verde Islands, which could see some inclement weather from Helene soon. If we look at the National Hurricane Center forecast, currently forecast to pass just to the south of the islands, but there are tropical storm warnings and hurricane watches in effect for the southernmost islands. I'm not entirely sure which islands they are, but uh, you can see them there on your screen. And they're eventually going to become a hurricane forecast by uh, tomorrow night, pro progressing into Tuesday, and then recurving on out to sea, more than likely, um, into Thursday. And after that, forecast can remain murky, but this one seems more solidified that it's going to actually turn on out to sea. Um, unlike Florence, which had a similar forecast track at this point, which is obviously all the way over here. Uh, so that's Helene, and we'll talk about more in the models uh, for both of these systems in a bit. But here's Tropical Depression 9 here. Uh, not quite a tropical storm just yet. Uh, it's still not the best organized storm we've ever seen. You can see here that the low-level center is kind of exposed to the east of all of this uh, deep convection. And, you know, it's convection is being very pulsated right now. You can see a little burst coming in at the very end of the loop right there. And we, an ASCAP pass found that this is not yet a tropical storm. About 30, still has about 30 knot winds at maximum. So this is still a tropical depression, despite maybe the looks of it being a tropical storm. Uh, so here's the water vapor loop uh, regarding both storms now. I guess we're going to do this a bit more, I guess, conjoined now. Uh, you can see that, I, excuse me, uh, almost Isaac, uh, I almost accidentally called this Isaac. My bad. Uh, so TD9 uh, is going to be being sh is getting being sheared, excuse me, from the east, and that's why all this convection is basically based on the west side of the center. Again, you can see that here, and all this is mostly coming out from this weak, kind of a weak ridge here in between um, TD9 and Helene. Uh, both of these storms are kind of the outflow from these storms are kind of causing more clockwise rotation in between and therefore you have some sort of a some sort of a ridge forming in between that's causing TD9 to be sheared from the east and both of these systems will continue off towards the west with the general trade flow and you can see here this is the GFS forecast uh, for these two storms we'll get to Florence in a minute um, you can see both of these storms here moving generally to the east uh, TD9 becoming a tropical storm, and again, if it were to become a tropical storm, which is pretty much a given at this point, it would gain the name Isaac, and you can see Helene back here passing towards the south of the Cabo Verde Islands as a intensifying storm that could easily be a hurricane by that time, and then both these storms continue off towards the west, um, TD9 moving in a more general westward direction, while uh, Helene over here takes a more west-northwesterly direction, and by the time we get to Wednesday here, we can see that TD9 is a decently powerful tropical storm, if you want to call it decently powerful. And then Helene's probably a decent, decently powerful hurricane that's about to recurve on out to sea. Because uh, as we can see here, this is Thursday, we can see that TD9 starts to weaken as it does approach the Lesser Antilles. Um, that's probably a 45, 40 knot tropical storm right there. And then Helene starts to curve more towards the north. As you can see here, we have this upper low, have this not upper low, this uh, trough up here that's going to be generally attracting Helene towards the north. And then we also have this ridge going to be building out here over towards the Canaries. And then I will continue to steer Helene off towards the north. Um, meanwhile, TD8 moves in the Caribbean, continues to weaken, and becomes eventually a tropical wave by Friday. 
and then continues on through the Caribbean, and you can see this ridge out here really building uh, in between the Azores and the Canary Islands that's steering Helene on out to sea harmlessly um, for the time being. And then TD9 just continues through the Caribbean as a, as a pretty strong wave axis, but doesn't really consolidate back into a tropical cyclone. Uh, here's the European model, and both it kind of shows a similar solution. Uh, it keeps uh, TD9 a little weaker, though. That's probably a wave before it even hits the islands, and if it were to make landfall, this one's showing it moving close to this market, Martinique. And then Helene recurving on out to sea as the ridge builds in again between the Azores and the Canaries. Uh, though... Uh, the European does keep uh, TD9 as a pretty vigorous tropical wave and potentially even reforms it on the run as it approaches Central America, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see if that pans out. Uh, so here's the National Hurricane Center forecast for TD9. You can see here moving towards the island, becoming eventually a hurricane in this run. It, uh, in this model is showing it uh, becoming a, I believe, an 85 mile an hour tropical Hurricane, excuse me, it's been a lot of action going on recently. I apologize if I'm stuttering a little bit. But um, an 85 mile an hour hurricane, I believe, moving towards Martinique by Thursday. I do have my doubts over this forecast, though, because the models have been trending significantly downwards with the storm's intensity. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. So that's the rest of the activity. The rest of the video will be dedicated to Tropical Storm Florence, which is posing the biggest threat to land right now, uh, even though it is currently located basically smack dab in the middle of the Atlantic, as we can see on the wide shot. It's not really anywhere near land yet, uh, but I say yet with a huge asterisk because it is going to be moving towards the land pretty soon. As we can see here, a lot better to find than it was yesterday and two days ago. Yesterday, and for the past two days basically, it's been being sheared out of the southwest and has been having all of its convection being based off towards the northeast. The center was somewhat misaligned and in general just didn't look very good. Weakened from a category four to a tropical storm. And now it's starting to gain some more intensity back. Uh, you can see outflow here now finally extending towards the southwest, meaning that the storm is beginning to start its much-anticipated intensification trend. We can kind of see it here in, in the current recon pass, showing a pressure about 991 millibars, which is 4 millibars lower than the estimate from the National Hurricane Center, in addition to some hurricane-force flight-level winds found in the northern quadrant of Florence here. So, yeah, Florence is going to be a significant storm because it's going to be intensifying and moving towards the west and potentially posing a long-range threat to uh, North America as we can see here in this water vapor loop. Uh, we have some, we still have some things for uh, Florence to go through here. This upper, this upper low over here that's been generally causing some inflow here into the storm that's been shearing it uh, is now beginning to back off towards the north and is not going to be as big of a player now. Um, in, and then Florence is going to continue off towards the the west as it gets caught underneath the general trade flow and is going to be moving in this area and you can kind of see here that weak upper low this is associated with that one other disturbance I briefly mentioned uh, that has a 10% chance of development pretty much going to be a non-player here as this is going to be generally just kind of sitting here and it will probably feed into Florence once it moves into this area and this is once it moves into this area you can see in here it's going to be moving in between uh, Bermuda and the Bahamas is going to be centered somewhere in here, uh, probably not in not too short of a time frame. Potentially by Tuesday, it could be in this journal area, and it's Saturday right now, so it can be, it's going to be moving a lot faster now, considering that it's been moving relatively slow in the past few days. And the question here becomes, will it impact the United States or not? Well, unfortunately, the track forecast has become a bit more confident uh, in recent days that it will impact in the United States. Where in the United States? Still hard to tell, but there's more confidence that there will be impacts, um, direct or indirect. So here's here we have the European forecast. Here's Florence. We can see here that this ridge is kind of extending outward, generally forcing it towards the west. Uh, and this trough that we mentioned that could potentially pick it up, that's no longer a player. It's pretty much, it's not going to dig down far enough to actually pick the storm up and bring it on out to sea. That's no longer on the table, basically. Every model shows it moving towards the uh, East Coast of the United States. Uh, and you can see here by Tuesday, the ridge really starts to build in and becomes very powerful as we get into Wednesday. Here it is in between the, uh, excuse me, Bermuda and the Turks and Caicos. And this is going to be moving at a much faster clip now that this ridge is beginning to intensify quite a lot. And then you can see here by Thursday, this is actually, um, excuse me, this is Wednesday evening. And we can see here that Florence is moving generally closer towards the Carolinas. And you can see this ridge here is kind of more shaped more like a peanut in general. And 
this is going to be basically forcing it right into the Carolinas. As you can see here, this is Thursday evening. We have a hurricane making landfall um, along the coast of South Carolina, and that could potentially be a Category 3, Category 2 hurricane at this time, potentially even stronger uh, based on the National Hurricane Center forecast. And then we're moving inland and then could potentially be kind of stalling in this area because we have ridging going on to the north, um, sort of influenced by the other ridge building here in the kind of a lack of troughing going on in the area. So there's going to be a lot of ridging going on around the storm. The ridge that's going to be steering inwards is going to be moving towards the south and will kind of be in between. Um, so Florence will be in between this ridge and the other one building over, say, Michigan and Ontario. And this will kind of make the storm stall in the area. So rainfall is going to be a big threat after the landfall, but that threat is still kind of uncertain at this time considering it's farther out. But we'll just have to wait and see on how that pans out. Um, the GFS solution is a bit different. And this one brings, you know, brings Florence towards the west like every other model. And we can see the ridge here building pretty significantly off towards the north. And it continues to move off towards the west, but instead, you can see here, as opposed to the European model, if we back up here, you can see the European model is more shaped kind of like this. You can see one of the edges extending into North Carolina, Virginia, the other one standing out, kind of pointing towards Puerto Rico. And so in the GFS model, you can see here that it's more pointed towards, say, New Jersey and Delaware, and the other point, other parts still kind of extending a bit farther off. So in this run, the storm actually stalls off the outer banks of North Carolina uh, for a little while. I have my doubts over this solution, though, because one, it doesn't have as strong of ridging as the European is predicting, and this has been generally con considered upon by the rest of the models and has been reflected through all their forecasts. I don't really think that any adjustment to this is likely. And the GFS also has it as a lot more intense storm, uh, and the GFS does have a tendency to make storms more intense due to... Uh, basically uh, expansions of the actual storm that are deemed unrealistic and the pressure really falls as a result. Uh, so I don't think that the GFS solution is likely, but again, it is on the table. Uh, right now, the European forecast seems the most likely and the rest of the models, including HWRF, the HVON, and the CMC, generally agree with this, as well as the UK MET model. Uh, but there still is uncertainty. I need to highlight that. You can see here in the general, uh, the ensembles here, we can see pretty much almost all of the European ensembles bring this in to North Carolina, South Carolina, even a few in Georgia, and even a few into North Florida, though I do, do think that solution is a bit less likely than one that moves into the Carolinas or maybe even up the East Coast. Um, and then inland again, moving a bit slower. Uh, and then the GFS ensembles, most of them bring it into North Carolina or just stalling it offshore. Uh, the mean, though, moving basically right into the Outer Banks. Uh, in general, there's still quite a bit of discrepancy between these models. Um, I think that the European may be a bit more um, likely in this case, not just because the European is more generally considered a better model, but I feel like it's having a better handle on the whole synoptic scenario with this particular storm. And the National Hurricane Center agrees, as we see here in their forecast track, bring it to major hurricane status by Monday, and then begin eventually becoming what they should say is 145 mile an hour uh, category four, by Wednesday and then approaches South Carolina as a slightly weakened but still category four hurricane moving into South Carolina probably by Thursday evening Thursday night and this could be a pretty significant storm in a number of ways this has the potential to be another high impact storm like we saw multiple times last year now am I saying this thing is going to be something like you know to the level of Hugo or Isabel or any other or Fran or any of these other huge storms that impact the Carolinas or Hazel no, but I am saying that this is something that we really need to monitor because it has the potential to be like those storms if these forecasts come to fruition. Again, it is still long range. A lot of things can change in between these in between now and then. So you're just going to need to continue to keep track with all your local weather authorities, and they will give you the best advice as to whether or not the storm will impact you. And impacts are likely to occur, uh, most likely arrival of tropical storm force winds, in the Carolinas probably by Wednesday night and that could even extend tropical storm force winds could even extend a bit farther north or farther south depending on where exactly Florence is located at this exact point it could be farther south than this or it could be further north we you, you might not see a landfall again it's just still a little bit too early to say but track forecasts have become more confident that an impact in the United States is more likely with Florence here all right so that's it for the tropics today uh, again, Florence here moving towards the west, towards the United States. 
And then there's two systems in the tropics, both going to move on out to the west and potentially TD8 or TD9 potentially impacting the Caribbean. All right, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to stay with alert, especially during this time.